Oh, one of my favorite artists. For those of you who know, you know. Again, if this is your first time here, I am Blair Armstrong of Team Armstrong Cobalt Banker located in Indian Wells, California. In just a few moments, I will be joining a very good friend of mine and co-host of Old Guys Still Rock, Brent Wright. Uh, but now we are going to be episode number 43 today. Uh, we're going to revisit a podcast that we did a couple of weeks ago uh, about getting your house in order. It's going to be a different topic today, but just some of the things that we've experienced that we'll share with you that maybe trigger you to going like, oh gosh, you know what? I need to make adjustment. The reason why we're doing this is because we felt that we've come so far that we really realized that without us getting better, we can't help others get better. And without you getting better, you can't help me get better. So we're hoping this is a community uh, effort, if you may. So without any more being said, enjoy episode number 43. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to that uh, uh, YouTube channel or the Spotify channel. If you haven't done it ever as well, is uh, go ahead and share the show. Let us know what your thoughts are. What are you doing to make a difference? So that is it right now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to the other side and get Brent in here and uh, talk about what we're doing to get our house in order. We appreciate you guys. Enjoy the episode. All right, all right, all right. Good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome back. We are Old Guys Still Rock. We are in episode number 43 today. Richard Petty, if the, for you NASCAR guys, a long time STP, Richard Petty. That's what I remember when I was a kid, man. The STP car showed up and Richard Petty and how cool that was to see an old NASCAR. Uh, I actually can remember where it was uh, in beautiful Beaverton, Oregon, off of Beaverton Hillsdale Highway. Oh, wow. Probably in 1980-ish, maybe 78-ish. So Ooh. anyway, way back in the day. Um, but anyways, well, again, my name is Blair Armstrong. Not again, but my name is Blair Armstrong. <laughs> I am with Team Armstrong Cowell Baker, located in beautiful Indian Wells, California. And to my right, possibly your left, is my very good friend uh, and co-host of the show for almost 30 years. Well, kind of a little tongue tied today, but Brent Wright of Brent Wright Incorporated. This is why we call old guys still rock. Sometimes it comes out really good. Sometimes we have a little bit of stumble. Yeah. So and, how you technical, out my... and technical difficulties as well. So hey man, technical, uh, a, lot, <laughs> a lot. So how are you holding up, man? What's going on in Eugene, Oregon? Doing well. Uh, it is uh, allergy season here. So uh, as you can tell, the last couple of uh, episodes have been coughing and hacking and wheezing and uh, kind of living on uh, allergy medication. So it'll be over soon. And, uh, you know, it's kind of wild because normally on a rainy day, you don't get a lot of pollen. But we had mm -hmm. like an 1100 pollen day the other day on a rainy day. It's just crazy. So for those that don't know, like anything over 200 is like intense. I am getting my booty kicked out here right now because all of our trees are, all the fruit trees mm -hmm. are pollinating for next year already. So basically the fruit that's on it right now is going to go away. Mm. I mean, it's awesome smell. If you ever old school, if you guys are from Oregon or Washington and stuff like that, and you ever, when you were kids, again, this is old guy still rock. So yeah. 55, maybe older, but if you ever remember driving down on whatever, highway that is in orange county and opening up your window and smelling the orange blossoms that's yep. what it smells like out here right now it's awesome 10, the 10 freeway yeah, the 10 freeway uh it is an awesome smell love it we have a couple fruit trees outside of our house but my allergies are through the roof right now yeah yeah and, uh, so i'm doubling down on as you said allergy pills and uh <laughs> Uh, what I love to do is go play golf and that's probably not the best place to be right now, but it's more yeah. so in my throat and my nose than my, and it used to be when I lived in Eugene, it was my eyes. Yeah. So, so the one thing that's been helping me is the cold plunge, get in it twice a day. Um, I get in, you know, up to here and it really helps to loosen up my chest. Yeah. makes it to where I can sleep good. Um, in the morning, I dunk my face in it and all the garbage comes out for the first couple hours of the really? morning. Yeah. Yeah. I do it three times uh, for about 10 seconds each. And so I'm in there for about four minutes. And over that four minutes, I dunk my face at least three times for 10 seconds. So huge benefit. Huge. It's worked out well. Uh, I've, been, 
Yeah, I've been doing cold plunging now for about two and a half years. Has um, it been that long already? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fast. Yeah. I mean, my son was uh, he was four, and he's going to be seven. God, Luigi. Yeah. Actually, he's seven. Sorry, he's seven now. So he was... He was uh, about ready to turn five, and so he was four, and mm-hmm. so he's seven now. So yeah, about two and a half years. He'll be eight this year. So um, yeah, we so started it. Uh, we started it three almost three summers ago. God, I didn't realize it's been that long. That's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So you ready, kid, dude? Are you ready to get into this? I, I am. Let's uh, let's rock let's and roll. Dive into this. I didn't mean to cut you off, but let's just get yeah. into it. I kind of feel a little feisty today. <laughs> So Good. if this one's comes off, uh, if this one comes off a little bit uh, <laughs> uh, platformish or pedestal, whatever you want to call it, um, I just think that you know Brett brought up this subject the other day. Uh, we have talked about this a couple episodes ago, uh, or a couple episodes back. Um, so there will kind of be some common threads along this, but it's a message that kind of needs to keep being repeated. As they say, sometimes you have to say seven, eight, nine times before it actually sets in. We're a little um, thick. We're a little so. thick up there, right? <laughs> and again, if this is your first time here, this is not a podcast about telling you how to do things. This is a this is a podcast to make you ponder about things and maybe make some adjustments in your life. Because at the end of the day, is uh, what Brent and I have discovered is we can't depend on anybody else to lead us. Um, and Brent will say this. We'll probably come up to this. The you know the um, personal, personal excellence. Yeah, go ahead. Is the ultimate rebellion. Yeah. yeah. And so it's just fine tuning everything that we have and all the talent that God has given us to become better every day, understanding of the better. How does that become, how, how does this help us to become better leaders? And Brett and I will also tell you that no matter what, we believe that everybody on this planet can be a leader. Uh, you just have to find out where your niche and for that leadership is just like we have two arms, two eyes, uh, feet, whatever those, they all work together in certain aspects of, of life. And that's why we need more of you uh, to find, tap into what your leadership skills are and help us become better. This is not two guys telling you, do this, do that. If you don't do this, you're going to fail. That's not the, I guess, because we're a work in progress in ourselves. So, Amen to that. so let's get our house in order. Yeah, so yeah. I posted this, and uh, and I think it resonated with you. Um, mm-hmm. And then you asked for a topic, and I said, mm-hmm. well, what about this post? I posted, contrary to popular belief, there is no comfortable way to get your house in order. Take action and get it done. Go make a damn difference. Mm-hmm. So everybody's always saying, go get your house in order. Get your stuff in order. Take mm-hmm. care of yourself. Take care of your family. Take care of your business. You know, make things happen. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever tells you how to do that or that it might suck a little bit mm-hmm. or it might suck a lot. Mm-hmm. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, what does get your house in order mean? Well, for me, it means having a place that my family feels safe and comfortable in a home. Right. And, and, or wherever we're at. So situational awareness is getting my house in order. So I'm teaching my kids situational awareness to make sure they understand that you I don't want them to be distrusting of the world. I want them to be aware of the world. So mm-hmm. that that's how getting my house in order means mm-hmm. to me as far as getting my kids addressed uh, to the ways of the world. Um, you know, getting my house in order uh, is my lawn mode. Mm-hmm. Is my laundry done? Mm-hmm. Is, 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 right? Just keep adding to the list. And it's a list that is never ending. And... That's the problem. I think people make lists to cross stuff off Mm -hmm. thinking that they're going to get to the bottom of the list. And it never, the the list is kind of like the post office, right? You know why people, they they say people go postal at the post office because the mail just keeps coming and there's never an end Mm -hmm. because everybody's mailing stuff all the time. So there's never an end to it. Right. So it's the same thing in life. You know, if you don't have anything on your list today, probably better check yourself because you might be exiting stage left. Yeah. And I think that we, and, and I'm sure that other people have heard this too, is if you start becoming comfortable, that's a bad sign uh, because it just means like, okay, you've accomplished that part, but what's next? And if you're like, okay, I'm comfortable here, I'm just going to kind of just, you know, I'm going to slowly just row my oars. 
or, you know, I don't really have to make adjustments. I'm kind of on this clear sailing knot now. That will actually lead to, and again, from experiences, being comfortable will lead you to a, a lot of detriment down the line. And I don't care what people say. Um, it, it's, it's the truth on that part. And I will say this too. For those guys who are making a damn difference and making those adjustments and becoming better and stuff like this, it's very hard right now when you see people kind of just staying steady. Yeah. And and it's frustrating with the part of it get to the point that, and I hope that those guys that are continuing to look for greatness and continue to pursue greatness and, and making a difference, because I know a lot of you guys that are watching this and the ladies too are doing this, don't stop doing it because it's tiring. And I think Brent said that in the beginning is like, you know, it's, it sucks. It's a lot of work. I feel like you may be the only one that's doing it, especially if you're in a circle that people are not really striving the way that you're striving to try to become better. doesn't make us either right or wrong on that. But I think the big thing right now, and, I, and I'm going to use an example. The big thing right now is keep getting better, but don't get frustrated. Don't quit. As I just said earlier, don't quit when somebody else uh, around you is not doing the same thing. And I use this example. Uh, I think it was last Saturday. Uh, we were golfing. And live in a country club. Signs posted on, on the course because it was there was people just kind of walking wherever, you know, with, uh, people were walking their dogs in the middle of golf shots, blah, 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 running the golf course while golfers were on it. Uh, to people that may not see a big deal, but it's a big deal. Okay. So long story short is a group of us are getting ready to tee off. There is this person walking down the golf course on the phone, on the speaker and dog without a leash. Mm. And like, okay, Lusa, Lusa, it's not a big deal. Uh, I'm the last one out of four to go ahead and tee off. Some guys tee off. This lady's kind of farther up, and the closer she gets, the closer it gets time for me to go ahead and tee off. Now, I – and the dog is, by the way, is kind of running back and forth, and she's screaming. I'm just using this name. Baxter, Baxter, come here. And then back on her phone and talking, and we're just like, oh, my God, this lady is just like – completely unaware of her surroundings and looking right at us. So finally I'm in my backswing and just as I'm coming up to shoot, Baxter. Now I get through the shot. It's a decent shot. The point I'm trying to make is that's like, I, I had it because it was, you know, it's a good, she walked a good 150 yards this whole time while we're on there thing and just didn't stop or wait or different things. This. And so, I basically said, what are you doing? And she goes, excuse me. And I go, what are you doing? And she goes, and I go, you saw us golfers here. Your dog is running all over the place and you're talking on your phone loudly. And she goes, well, I live here. And I go, I don't care. This, your house and this golf course are two separate entities. And she goes, well, I'm, I'm on the board of the HOA. And I go, again, I don't care. They're two separate entities. The point I'm trying to make, and I know this sounds really petty, especially for a guy that belongs to a country yeah. club, and that's not the point. The point of it is, is that my, the entitlement that was because I live here, I can kind of do whatever I want. And then I'm talking to my buddy. He's like, I apologize. I got a little bit more animated on that than that. And he goes, like, you no, know, my dad always told me sometimes you just got to let it go. We have been going through the past couple of years because of differences between who believes in the right, who believes in the left, who believes in the middle, whatever is going on in society. And it's kind of like, you know what? Just let it go. And I think this is where I come down to is your house in order because sooner or later, you've got to say something to me. And I may be completely off base here, brother. But sooner or later, you've got to help people accountable if there is stuff set in place and you just keep letting it go. Well, it doesn't really affect me too much. At the end of the day, is it really going to change my life? That's the problem to me. Do you understand where I'm going with this? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to help you with this. I'm going to give you a tool. Okay. So because I was so, mad. 
All right. All right. Now I, I, st- I got two things for you. One, I got a little bit of copy that I've been, I've been pondering that'll kind of uh, bring this home, but I want to address your issue uh, with the golf course situation. So it could have been handled. This, this is getting your house in order, right? Because mm-hmm. anybody that you allow to trigger you has control over you. True. So they own you. True. You just allowed them to rent space in your head, in your mind, in your psychological well-being for free. Mm-hmm. Now, do you work for free? Nope. So well, why would you let somebody rent space in your mind for free? Right? And, and that's yeah, tough. Yeah. Because no, it's tough, for I'm, sure. I'm calling you out, but I'm calling me out because I do right. this, right? So, right. again, we've talked about this. Driving down the road, somebody cuts you off. You're like, you just want to flip yeah, them off, yell right. and scream at them, cuss and holler at them, right? And so, and it's and and none of which is um, it. It's not effective, right? Because right. we talked about this last time. The the eight to ten minutes that you are angry is going to take you six or eight hours to get mm-hmm. rid of. Mm-hmm. So, could you have wa- walked up to her, asked her to please pause her phone conversation? And asked her, is there something that we can help you with? Mm-hmm. And she would have said, well, I live here. Perfect. So are you aware of the, of the rules? Well, I'm on the HOA. I make the rules. I help make the rules. Perfect. So you, you've now told me that you live here. So you're aware of the rules. You're on the HOA. So you're aware of the rules. And these rules are here to benefit all of us, you included, as well as mm-hmm. me. Is there something I can help you with that allows us to coexist peaceably in this Mm -hmm. environment together? Mm -hmm. If you're struggling with your dog, I'm really good with dogs. Is it possible that I can help you get your dog under control and help take them home? And and maybe, you know, maybe it's not as, as big of an issue. Different mindset, right? You are looking looking for solutions for other people, not just yourself. That's the toughest thing because in the moment you're like, you know, So while you're pondering that, I want to give you this. I've been writing this and formulating this since December 13th. I've been adding to this every couple of days, every couple of weeks, whenever I get time. If you're going to be part of the 1%, that means statistically and factually, 99% 99% of the people aren't going to think like you. They're not going to talk like you. They're not going to work like you. They're not going to move like you. How can you expect them to understand you? Mm-hmm. You can't. It's math, statistically, and factual math. When you remove this expectation and surround yourself with people who do understand, You will free yourself to move with less frustration, disappointment, and resentment. Their understanding of you is not required. So you were expecting her to understand your position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you weren't trying to understand her position. Because you felt her position didn't matter because she was breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. Right. And Mm -hmm. so, and rightfully so, I'm not Mm -hmm. saying right or wrong. I'm just saying that you would never do this. So why would you think that somebody else who's part of the 99% would do anything different? So are they wrong for being in the wrong place at the wrong time and doing uh, things against the rules? Or are you wrong for calling them out? Right. Because they're not going to understand you. Now this, the reason why I've been writing this is because this is what I live in my head and in yeah. my heart and in my body every day. Yeah. And I think, and I want to go back to absolutely 100%. I was embarrassed when it was done. Cause I par- apologized to my partner who was a part of that. who told me to chill out. He's a good friend of mine. And it's not yeah. to tell me to chill out. It's just sometimes you have to let it go. I, but you hit the nail right in the head is because, and I already said it earlier. I'm making changes to become better, and it frustrates me when people just kind of stay status quo and don't do anything yep. else. And you're absolutely right. Could I have handled it better? One million percent. 
I'm embarrassed to talk about it, but the only reason I shared it is because I failed. And in the essence yeah. of the day is I failed. So Well, because we, we, we always say, share your wins, share your losses, right? So right, you're sharing right. a loss, right? Right, right. Yep. So I failed on multiple levels. I failed personally. Uh, you know, as you, our foundation has always been faith. And so if that person ever knew, like, you know, okay, he, he's a Christian, whatever. There we go. Another hypocritical Christian. Love everybody except when it comes in and disrupts his life. So there's uh, so many different fingers that can come back to me. I apologize quickly on that. Didn't apologize to her, which I probably should have if I ever see her again. I will. Uh, and that's truth. And I'll let you know if I ever see that person again. And most yeah. likely that I will. The point of I think that's, <laughs> that's the, the point. Yes. Could have handled a different way. Definitely talked a way out to it. Didn't have to explode that part. It's just in a, when people are striving to become better, when I was talking to the general public and we get frustrated, this is the type of stuff, but you gave us a, an antidote for it. This is the type of stuff like, you know what? I'm just not going to care anymore. Care, but do what Brent was saying, is go back and actually have communication how to resolve it in a nice way. Instead of just like, you know what? It's not that big a deal. Move on. No, stop ignoring it. That's the yeah. point of this whole discussion. Yeah. Get your house in order yeah. and then yeah. help others, right? right? So just like they tell you on the plane, which is a whole nother discussion, um, <laughs> put, put your mask on, you know, and then help others put their mask on, right? And so right. you, in that situation, you had an opportunity to put your mask on and then go help her, mm -hmm. but you chose to try to force her to put her mask on first before you put yours on in yeah. that analogy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and again, guilty as charged, mm -hmm. huge guilt here. So, well, we're all guilty in that. It's just, it's, you know, first of all, it's, it's, it's as a maintenance. Um, yeah, I was not happy, you know, obviously it's still, it's still a spur in my side, a, a spur in my thing. And I think it's just, there's so much, and I think a lot of people can relate with this. There's so much animosity towards other people if they're not in the same circle or don't think the same way that yeah. you do right now. And it's building and it's building. I see it on, you know, I have good friends that are sitting in a different, different belief than I do and love them dearly. But you're like, what the hell are you thinking? I'm sure that I put stuff out there and like, they're like, what the hell are you thinking? Um, but a valid point is how, and we had this discussion a while back on our podcast is how do we, do, how are we discussing issues with the other without blowing up and seeing both yeah. sides of the story and being, yep. the, being the antidote instead of being the, uh, the, the cancer mm -hmm. you know, or the virus. So that's, yep. you know, but, um, so yeah, but it's not going to be easy. It's a, str oh. it's a struggle. I mean, I can, I can sense it and feel it in you. Like you feel lightly ashamed about your oh, action. Yeah. Absolutely. Today. Yeah. But what I'm telling you is don't. Yeah. So remember, again, this is old guy still rock. So, uh, you know, remember the uh, the movie Red Dawn with Patrick yep. Swayze. Yep. And when after their dads got killed and, mm -hmm. and shot by the Russians, he said, take your anger and let it turn into something else. Mm -hmm. Take your anger and let it turn into something else. And that's the call out here to ourselves and to others is get your house in order and do not let it slide, but also do not deliver the message in a way that lessens you mm -hmm. as a leader, as a community leader, as an individual, mm -hmm. as a human. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you're going to sit here like you are and feeling bad for your actions three days later, two mm -hmm. days later, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And that's not, that's not um, that's not positive for you. That's not positive. It's not conducive because she forgot all about it. She's yeah. gone. She, you know, she, out of her she, head. She gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I think that you know that's a big that that you said something too on this, and um, she's renting space in my head. Yeah, that I could be concentrating on other things um, for free. For free, and it's a poison. Uh, yep. because it po not only if it gets in your mind and somehow it will get into your heart and that poison your heart and what the words that come out of your mouth, 
uh, or is, is what's in your heart. So again, is I'm sharing this instance because a lot of you can relate, Brett can relate, every, you know, a lot of our viewers will be able to relate is there's frustration in all of us right now for what the world that we're living in, the same that we're subjected to from movies to politics to, to friendships, whatever that may be, there's frustration in that. And it's starting to infiltrate. If it's infiltrating, my heart is definitely infiltrating everybody else's heart. Yeah. And hopefully this kind of goes like breath. What Brent said is maybe I, hopefully I'm better uh, next time around. It's like when that situation, that tr what he just said triggers in my mind, take a breath, explain the thing to it, maybe look at it a different light, but approach it to a way that it's conducive, not only to you uh, as conducive to both parties and help them become better both ways instead of, Sep keep that separation, you know, uh, right or left or, you know, whatever. Again, we always have to come in the middle. I think that's what we've been talking about a lot about it. We have to meet in the middle and we're, we're fighting harder and harder to stay in that middle, but just don't get tired of that fight. Keep fighting on it. Keep trying to find different ways of communication. Um, talk about your feelings, but don't subject somebody to make them feel stupid or unwanted. That's what I did. It wasn't right. Um, Again, just sharing experience. Yeah. So again, but you have to give yourself some grace mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. situation, right? So you got uncomfortable, you yeah. learn from it, and you're mm -hmm. going to grow from it. And we're talking about it today, Therapy Thursdays, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but ultimately, back to it's not going to be easy to get your house in order. No. no. Right? And this is a growth process. And it is imperative that you give yourself some grace and give yourself some understanding. Like, am I going to be perfect always? No, but I will try to strive better and learn and grow. And then I will forgive myself. That is a key tool mm -hmm. to this. You have to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why not only having therapy Thursdays is that, uh, um, you know, I, again, kind of be transparent here is, I have to become better. And I know one of those steps to become better is to sit down and talk to somebody. Uh, we're on a once a week type of thing right now. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's just to get your thoughts out. I know we do this on Thursday stuff too, but having professionals help you out is not a bad thing. I think that if you talk mm -hmm. to any um, really good business coach or any type of coach that is successful and actually done the stuff you would talk to the same way. Most of those guys have guys or, or women um, that they go in and, unveil through and help it through this process. This helps out Brett and I a lot. And I'm sure and the, for the responses that you guys uh, have given us too, this helps you out too a lot. But if you're feeling that you need more than this, don't feel bad to reach out to a therapist and, and start talking through it. It was a very hard step for me because I'm so, yeah, you know, it was ingrained to me. Remember we talked about this a, a couple of weeks ago, right? did I, do you absorb somebody else's identity? Mm -hmm. And when you realize that you have, and you have some of those traits that are embedded in you and you kind of realize that at 53, 54, 55 years old, or maybe it's later on in life for you, or maybe it's earlier on in life to you. It's very hard to get rid of those triggers because they're so embedded to you after for so long that one little match lights that fire. And yeah. that's what happened to me on the golf course. And it was super uncalled for. Uh, it could happen, and I'm using that example, it could happen in relationships, something could be said to you inside of a relationship, which has happened uh, to anybody that's been in a relationship. There is that old school trigger that someone does something or says something the wrong way, and you instantly go into defensive mode. Um, that's <laughs> where I'm working on right now. So, so I learned uh, a couple things. Uh, one, I, I learned delivery is the key mm -hmm. from my then four-year-old son. We talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Him calling out a full-blown grown man about putting his cart back, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so he's walking through the parking lot, told this story before, sees this guy just dumping his cart right over the curb and gonna leave it there. And he's like, hey, you gonna leave that there? The guy's like, what? He's like, go put your cart back. We don't, we, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Like we as humans don't do that. Mm -hmm. And this six foot, 240 pound grown man being called out by a four-year-old, 
he didn't yell at him. He didn't scream at him. He didn't cuss at him. He didn't shake his fist at him. He just said, we, we don't do this. Mm -hmm. I learned something that day watching my son. One, I was like, praise God that he's listening to me because right. I feel like he's not listening to me a lot of times. Right. But, but secondarily, it's like his delivery was right on. And if yeah. I could just let him take that and, and run with that mm -hmm. throughout the rest of his life, he's going to be a better human than me. And that's, I think my goal is, you know, to have my kids be better than me yeah. uh, at some point. So um, <laughs> the other thing is um, there, there's a lot happening now in this world that is making people, men and women, both, feel like they're not enough. Mm -hmm. And if you have the opportunity to interact with somebody who's making a damn difference in your life, mm -hmm. thank them, congratulate them, compliment them, hold them up. That is part of getting your house in order is making sure that everybody in your life that you appreciate and that you care for mm -hmm. knows and understands that and never has to question your motives or your feelings or your mm -hmm. thoughts. Mm -hmm. The difference that that makes may save somebody's life. The difference mm -hmm. that that makes may save somebody's bad day, mm -hmm. turn it into a good day. Mm -hmm. So it is not really that difficult or complicated to get your house in order. It is little micro steps every single day, every single minute, every single hour, just make a damn difference in somebody's life. And it might be the thing that, that saves their life. Yeah. You know, that's a big thing too. You know, we brought that up to that it is a topic that is not concerned or, or, or discussed very much or brought up uh, unless you're in a different circle or you bring it up yourself. You know, there is, as you said, there's a lot of people hurting out there right now, <laughs> yeah. personally, financially, um, there's always an easier way or it's too much. I need to, I need to find a different way out. Um, you know, that's why I said, it. I, not, nobody's coming on a white horse to save us right now. And so the more, the more that this podcast helps people become better leaders or look at things at different light. Um, and that's including, uh, Brett and I on here. Um, to the Ken McCumbers, the Nick Soldens, the, the Ken Johnsons, the, everybody that's, you know, that's listened to this episode. Um, when Brent says to go make a damn difference, it just, it may be one person a week. It may be one person a day, maybe one person a year, but understand that we're not alone in this. And the more that we come together, even though that we may have differences as hard as it is. And Brent said this, it is not an easy road. It's, freaking struggle yeah but you might find out and we've said this before there's a lot more similarities than not yep. you know, in all of us um news social media um uh, news art you know uh, newspaper articles whatever channel that you watch whatever uh makes us think that you know it's it's us against them that's what they absolutely want uh, the powers to be want us to be, it's us against them. And it's hard to find your own circle. And sometimes it's like, you know what? I have no circle. I'm just going to go ahead and do this by myself or stay by myself and not bother anybody. Um, they're winning when you do that. And Brent is asking us, uh, which is very valid is maybe make some adjustments to how we live our life. Um, but go out and make a friend today because God knows, you know, I got a long way to go and so do you. Yeah. Um, but hey. you know, that's, that's some cool things about, about what we're doing here. Um, and to show our feathers on here. That's why we did this podcast. We just think there's a, there's another Avenue regardless of what we're subjected to every single day that once you join a part of this, you'll, you'll find more and more ways um, to get your message across. Our message may not be your message, but there may be some common threads to get your message across. So, yep. 
What do you say, brother? We go out and make a go make a damn difference today. Go make a damn difference. That's about it. I mean, That's it's a- it's it's not easy. It's uh, it's going to be tough, but you know, anything of value is tough. Yeah. So again, get in your house in order. Give us a couple uh, bullet points on that, and uh, maybe some things that we can concentrate on as a uh, group of fine individuals that are looking to become better. So. Getting your house in order is simple. Um, I have these two questions on my calendar every single day. Who do I have to become to make a difference? And am I the one to make a difference? And the second one is question everything you're doing. How am I making a difference? Those are my call outs to myself every morning, 5.30 and at 6.30. They're on my calendar. I read them every morning. It's not something I just snooze on my phone or dismiss. I open them and I read them. And that sets the tone for my day. Mm -hmm. Who do I have to become to make a damn difference? Every day is day one. Every day is day one. All right, guys, we're going to leave Brent with that. It was some profound stuff. If you missed that beauty thing about this podcast, you can rewind it, pause it, write it down, play it in your head, uh, write whatever you need to do. So we're going to get the heck out of here. Uh, thank you again for all of you that have supported us, that subscribed for us, that is spreading the message. We are growing Little by little, but we're growing. So thank you guys for your support. Have a great Easter weekend. Enjoy time with your family. Uh, for some of us who, are, who have faith, he has risen. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Uh, yep. But most of all, guys, enjoy your family. Take this time to reflect on uh, what a great year you may have, even though you had some challenges. I'm sure there's some highlights in there. Until we see each other next week, stay safe. But most of all, God bless. We'll talk to you guys next week. Take care.